Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen all over the world. Welcome to the wisdom of God, uh, you know, where we try to solve um, Nigerian problem using God's principle, using the prince divine principle to solve it. So this morning we are just going to go straight and be meditating on the fact. <coughs> Excuse me. We are going to be meditating on the verse of the Bible that says that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. Thanks for restoring my voice. So that verse is taken from Mighty chapter 18 from verse 1. He said, at that time, the disciple came to Jesus saying, who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? Then Jesus called a little child to himself set him in the midst and said as surely i say unto you unless you are converted and become as a little children you will be no means enter the kingdom of heaven therefore whoever humble himself as this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of god so we are we want to begin to hear people are opinion on what you understand about this verse first before we go into question and answer what do you understand about this verse what does this verse point to you what do you think about this verse before we go into question and answer jesus called a little child and said this little child is the greatest in the kingdom of god instead of jesus to call people like Buari and say that this Buari is or this president or this king is the greatest or sorry instead of god to call people like big big pastors that we know today that we think that they are the most holiest that we think that they will just put lay their hands on people people will be healed jesus christ now called a little child what do you think about this phenomenon praise the lord hallelujah and for my own understanding i think that the reason why god said that children are the greatest in the kingdom of god that even we have said we know that children they have they don't know anything they don't know much bad thing they don't have mind to do evil they have not started to develop evil mind in the in their mind so but like adults like we adults we don't have forgiveness. We don't even. We have no a lot of a lot of things bad doing evil. Like we don't, we don't forgive. Like we, we have no many many things. Like for small children can, small children you can be small children now. Small boy, or small boy. The, the person, will, the small boy will still follow you to play in next thirty minutes. But adults cannot do like that. So that is what I understand about. It. That is and God said that. For you to see the kingdom of God, you need to be humble like, like, like a child. So that is my own understanding, my own opinion. My Praise God. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. My question is that um, if it's small children, that they don't do anything, God beat them. I be two and two children that are, that are playing and they fight. After they fight, they play with uh, they play with themselves. Where adults go? If adults. Oh, the if I don't fight, they cannot play. They cannot play themselves. That is my question. Okay, yeah. You see, um, I like him um, the way Brother Samson answered this question. He said that children don't know anything, and God usually help people that are behaving ignorant. God usually help people that after you have known much, you calm down, do as if you don't know. And he said, children forgive easily. That is, children forgive easily, and they don't identify. They cannot easily identify who is their servant. If you beat them, they, they will go back to you to play. They would they would still um, accommodate you, still associate with you, still even give you the biscuit, despite the fact that you beat them. So that is, the, the two of them are rightly saying the same thing. So let's hear other opinion. Why did Jesus Christ say that children are the greatest? In the kingdom of God, children being the greatest. Who have any opinion? Anybody can talk. Samuel is a good child. That is why they sing. 
Shame me, eh, shame me, no more, be somewhere. A motto, mono, a motto, Tony Terry Ba. No, eh, where somewhere small. He, eh, in mother, she carry go to a church. Okay. Some is a obedient child. That's why God likes somewhere. Where somewhere is sleeping. God calls somewhere, somewhere. Eh, somewhere run to the server. My server. Who is calling me? Some, the first server has said that it's not me that calling you. Go and sleep again. Another time, somewhere, somewhere, go and say that it's me that calling you. And go test some all the tricks that uh, the server is doing. Go and test somewhere. That is why God likes somewhere. Yes. I think it's very, very correct. He said that Samuel is obedient child. child. And God likes obedience. One of the greatest sins. The greatest sin is not even to do all those things that we think of. The greatest sin is not to be obedient to God, to my own perspective. Well, ladies and gentlemen, if you are just joining us, we are on this question. We are trying to evaluate, um, um, wait this word, make a remark on why God said children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. You can drop yours in the, in the comment section thereafter, why God claim that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. Well, let's continue to hear other people's opinion. You can answer as many times as you like. Anything that comes into your mind. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Um, my own my opinion now is that the answer, my own answer now is the reason why God like children more than like the reason why God said that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. You know, like I said before, they said if except a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. You know, that born again means being a child. like a child. Like, you know, when we are born now, we are a child. So when we are still born again, we now leave all old things. There's a whole things will be passed away. So we are now turned to young child, born young born child. So and now what I'm trying to say is that among all the, the what to make us not to say kingdom of God is that our sins and amendments in Bible they said it's only our sins that that uh, separate, separate us with from uh, from God. So like small children now they don't have any sin, they don't know anything, they don't know left, they don't know right. They like everybody. Even if you offend them, na 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 in the next ten minutes or five minutes you will start playing together, they will start laughing at you. Like for instance all the Ten commandments, like do not kill, love your neighbor as yourself, love your enemy, love your this. Adults say we don't, we don't keep those those commandments, but mostly is children. They, all the all the ten commandments is children that keep it, but they don't even know the ten commandments and they are keeping it. Wow, that is very interesting. They don't so, know ten commandments, they are keeping and it, and they are keeping it. They don't kill. They don't hate the enemy, they don't hate their neighbors, they don't they fight, give. they don't they give. So that is my own opinion that God said that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Um, my question is like um, if um, some children they do bad things and um, they and their and their mom they will say that um, where do you go and then they will lie and say that um, they do not go anywhere and then um, Amo will not be saying them that where do you go where do you go after they will still be lying and be saying that um, they do not go anywhere that is why um, God God hates children yes. that is why God hates children because sometimes they are lying. But I think we are considering why did God say that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. So that one that are lying, those ones that start to acclimatize themselves with adult attitudes. Those ones that can lie and say that um, I did not go anywhere, whereas they went to somewhere. Those ones have become adults to some extent. Because what we is adult, adult is afraid of punishment. Children does not even know whether you want to beat him or not. So he, the, that one is afraid of punishment. And that is why he said, that he does not know and god hate that kind of attitude that your mother said don't go anywhere and you go god ate it 
And oh, your mother tells me, uh, Shade, I'm to wash it. I'm going to go back before I come. I the boy should run away, she go and play ball. After the mother will come, she not start washing the play. I said, Mommy, I'm doing something, I'm washing the play. That one is a lie. That one is a lie. God, too. Is, no God is not happy. That kind of child is not the greatest in the kingdom. That one has become adult because he is not following obedience of his mother. And if you know how mothers suffer, I, I, am, I am married and I know what mother passed through from, from pregnancy, all those kind of things. I know how mother suffer for the child. So they now tell the child, just watch plate only. Yes. The mother carried the child for ten, uh, nine months to all those sufferings. He now tell the child, just watch plate only. And then the child did not wash the plate. So that is not the best. So let's hear your opinion. Question, question and as I am talking, if you if just intercept me, you Sunday school is for you. We want to hear what you are talking. Jesus Christ, the one that we are obeying, our Lord and Savior. His disciple asked him a question that who is the greatest in the kingdom of God? His disciple wanted to know whether it is them that are following Jesus Christ day and night, whether they are the one who are the greatest. But Jesus Christ shocked them. Jesus Christ said, It's little children. And Jesus Christ said, it, Another verse, Jesus Christ said, Don't take little children away from me. Let them come. For theirs is the kingdom of God. So why do you think so? Let's continue to ask questions, bring opinion, share idea, all those kind of thought. Hallelujah. I have a question. Yes. <coughs> My question is that if there are some prophets that used to say that if God says something, you can like you can like man can change the world my question is that is it possible well if god says something man can change the stuff so that is a very good question who have answer is it true if god says something man can change the world it's not good it's not good okay you why you must do it if god tell that at this you know do it though. This thing I don't want to do it too. The one God he tell that she do, he will do it. But the one God knows see that he's not do it, he must not do it. Okay. He's saying that it's not good, but I would have liked to hear those kind of questions are not questions that you answer on a glue. Just yes or no. Because there are some things that God said that Jesus Christ came and said we should not. God said that your yes be yes and your no be no. No. That's good. what he said. Good. So there are some things that God said before are nice for a nice, but Jesus Christ came and said, No, now it is not eyes for a nice, it's not bone to bone. Forgive your enemy. So, but I I don't know whether your question, whether you can give us one example of what um the prophet said that God you should not use with man can change. Because we saw Jesus Christ try to attempt to change some things. Okay. No, what I'm trying to say is that like some people say for instance, now if rain won't fall, like God say, ah, there will be rain oh, today, oh, today. Rain is going to fall today. And let me say, a prophet have a program or party or something like that. And you just pray and talk to God. Hey, God, please, oh, today that you say the rain is going to fall, I cancel today. There will be no rain today, please. I want to do so, 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 something. And that's why I'm asking that question. Say, is it possible for a man to like change change the, the word of like God. that if God talks if God talks to prophets that there's more there's more rain to do and that prophet tell God ah God do I want to do this and there's more rain no there's there no, should not be rain there's not be rain no please so God do and God see that that God go not tell the prophet that there'll be rain no <laughs> there will be rain the person said, that, "Ah, God, though, I don't want to, I don't want rain to fall." Is it good or bad? It's good. It's good for the prophets yes. to stop the rain yes. so that the work of God can continue. Yes. Yeah, um, he said that it's good. So, who? How come is God that told you that it's rain? Yeah, you know, it's not possible that God told you that it's rain. And one thing is that. You can talk to God. The weather can change at any point in time. If you are a child of God and you have something important to do at that particular time, 
It's a thing you can talk to God. God, please. God sees your heart and He knows the intention of what you want to do. If it is something that is not that is bad, it's fine. You might not even know that it will rain. <laughs> because how if it is God that will come and tell you that uh, Samson is going rain is going to fall today, that you know that rain wants to fall, that you now tell God that you don't want that rain. Uh, yeah, maybe the weather, now. maybe the weather is changing, and then the prophet want to hold crusade, and sometimes the weather might even change, that it might not even fall. But there is nothing bad in it if you actually talk, if you know your stand and you know how to talk to God and you know and God sees your heart. Most times, your your intention of doing that thing matters most, and God is seeing the intention of you doing that thing. So if it's for you to go and arm someone or do something, that prayer might not be answered because God has seen the intention of what you want to do. But the moment God sees your heart, that okay, oh, what you want to do at that particular time is something that is good or something that is godly or something that is that will change some things for good. Uh, you talk to him, God, please, as in you talk to God. He will do it for you now. It's like you asking something from your father. It's like you praying that, okay, God, I need uh, this thing. Oh, God, please provide money for me. It's just like the same thing. You talking to God that, okay, God, I want this. Let the rain not, not fall at that particular time. Wow. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We are still on the question. If you are just joining us, we are still on this powerful question. We are trying to see, evaluate, think critically, why did God say that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God? Why would God make such statements? Let's keep it. I, having questions, answers, opinion, um, whatever, come in, keep rolling in on why God said that children are the greatest in the kingdom of God. God did not say the big pastors. God did not say prophet. God did not say um, those who will just speak a mountain will remove. All those kind of things. But we see in that Bible, Matthew chapter 8, Matthew chapter 18, God said, He called children and said, Until you be converted to these children, you shall not be kingdom of God. So why? Why? We want to hear the opinion. Some children believe that. That is why God said that they are the great things of God. Yeah. He said that because God said, that some it's because some children don't lie yes. some children don't lie so you know you don't want it i had one man said that if you want to hear the truth ask children you know there is this parable in nigeria like that if you want to hear the truth ask two people number one ask a child number two ask somebody who have drank ogogoro somebody who is influenced by he will just be saying all the truth he will be saying everything <laughs> number two three person that you should ask is ask them a very old man a very old man maybe all those 80 70 years but among those people, they did not even say, ask pastor. Can you imagine? They did not say, if you want to hear the truth, go and ask pastor, inquire, all those kind of people like that. So she is right. She is now saying that pastors, um, that um, children don't lie at all. And she is very, very correct, though, because from that parable, we know that that is the situation. Let's keep uh, um, receiving some questions, answers, with respect to children being the greatest in the kingdom of God. It is not possible for a child not to lie. The moment they give birth to a child, a child will know the good and the bad. And it depends on the training you give to your child. And Jesus Christ is telling us here is that it's not even every child that Jesus Christ is pointing out. He said, He said, Whoso he said, Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as a child. You humble yourself. Most times, the reason why Jesus Christ is saying this is because he said, whosoever humble himself, even as an adult, if you humble yourself down, not even a child alone. Even if a child, even as a child, if you decide, if you decide that uh, you want to be arrogant or anything like that, they will neglect you. Even as a child, though, that you are saying that the child, that, that children are even the greatest, though. If you decide that, okay, oh, you yourself, uh, can you tell me that this, this small boy, as small as he, does not know good and evil? If he takes something that does not belong to him, doesn't he, he know that this thing does not belong to him? He knows. But the moment you could humble yourself, you could, because Jesus Christ time it that, okay, oh, a child, one, most times, we are, it is right that they don't know, most times, they don't have that art to pack things. Like, okay, somebody has offended me now. 
like children, the house of that neighbor that you said don't go and play there again, no, that's where you see them the next moment. The person that you said that don't talk to, don't play with this person, is the next person that you see them playing with. Just because they they don't have that art to store, uh, what would I call it? Is it grudges or iniquity or things like that? They easily forgive. But as a child, if you did not humble yourself, and as an adult, if you did not humble yourself, you will not be the greatest. But a child that easily humble him or herself, even the Bible says in Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 22, verse 15, he said, foolishness is bound in the heart of child. He said, with rod, rod of correction, is the one that will drive it out. Like a child, a breastfeeding child, your mother is breastfeeding you, and you now bite your mom. If you see a child that does that, immediately the child bites his or her mommy's breast. You will see that the child will look at the mommy, the mommy's face. The moment the mother does not correct that child at that particular time, he will continue doing it. He will think that what he does, he was right. But the moment the child bites you, why does the child look at your face? Just because he wants your reaction on what he has done. Maybe, okay, I want to know if what I've done is good or bad. But the moment you correct that child at that particular time, that he, he bites your breast and you slap the child man next time he will not do that again even in proverbs chapter 23 verse verse 13 he said with old not correction from child for if thou beat a child with rod he shall not die that is why i, I pity some of our parents they pamper their child instead of they, they've done something wrong instead of them to correct them or even give them punishment they will not die with that punishment it's just for you to correct them, but they will leave them. Ah, eh, ah, mobi. people is only one that I gave birth to. I can, can you train a child and become hundred? It's not possible. He said a child that you fail to train. Your used to say that only If you if you fail to train your child and you decide that you want to make millions, make to make, is that child that you refuse to train that will destroy all those millions that you have made? So these case, children, prison case can take all your money. These these children, they are very they are, they have they have a very soft heart. So if you deal with them right, that's why Jesus Christ is comparing them as that they are the greatest. Just because they have a they have a they have a soft heart. Their heart. That's why I said if you are humble, definitely every one of us too, we should try and make our heart as soft as a child. Child, a, a child easily forgive. They don't really take things like the way we, we adults, we adults does things. And a child that lie or things like that, it is not that he does not know that what he's saying is not true. But the moment the child says such a thing, you must correct that child at that particular time. So the reason why God is telling us that the child is the greatest is just because they have that spirit of humbleness, one, and that they are hard, they have a they have a gentle heart, they have a gentle mind, except the one that God forbid though we have some child that the devil himself as the, as the one that has originated and even they they have they have, uh, they have what, what, how would I put it now? Their hearts, even no, from birth, even from birth, that there's nothing you can do that, that can change that change that child heart. But the moment we ourselves, we can humble ourselves. That is why. That is why God is comparing, and it's it's not it's not only talking about that the children alone, that the children alone are the greatest. We adults too. If we can humble ourselves, surely we'll be the greatest. We'll be the greatest, even if you know all. But you humble yourself. You don't you don't say you are the you are the Mister Know All. You still humble yourself to 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 listen to others and listen to some things. And you will see that you yourself, you see that you are you are also the greatest among all. So, thank you. Wow, thank you. Um, so, if a child is from it from breast sucking, from is it um, they call them breastfeeding? From breastfeeding, a child can start to even be doing some errors <laughs> to self, and he realize it. Wow, that is a high opening. I it's like I've heard that word somewhere, but I, I I did not know that. It's now that it resonates in my mind. That a child can actually be committing crime while he's still breastfeeding. So God did not actually, and the point is so far too, God did not actually say that we should go and become children because some children have some character that is even worse. You go and watch this movie, The Orphan. The child killed the mother. A child 
that is the movie, the orphan. The child killed the mother, killed the mother, killed his kid, that killed that, and it's a small child. So she is saying that child humbleness is the greatest. Child willing to learn, child willing to take the correction is what God actually says that we should humble, not to begin to go and become like a child. Because some child, their mouth is even sharp than even an adult. I have seen, I, I, am, I was a teacher in, in some school. I saw some children, their mouth is worse than an adult. You have seen those children too. So let's, we still have a few, a, a, a few time, maybe like 10, 15 minutes. We are considering the fact we are considering the point Jesus Christ called his disciple and said that um, ch children are the greatest until you be converted. So my wife just clarify everything. She just clarify everything. She said, oh, it is when you convert to the good characteristics of that little children. That is why you are the greatest in the kingdom. It's not only children that are the greatest. Because we, before we were mistaken that all the children would just enter even because God has said this. But she's saying that a child who does not follow some instruction is not the greatest. So let's keep having answers and questions rolling in. This is Sunday school. School is where teacher talks, student talk. I have already teach. I teach by reading Matthew chapter 18. I said children are the greatest of God. That is how that is how we teach here. So students begin to ask questions, contribute, and subtract everything. Let's keep it rolling, please. Everybody can talk. And I also add something to, to it. That Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, Train up your child, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Okay. He's saying, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. That means that even as a parent, most times, our children becoming wayward most times to be candid is the fault of the parents most times all these things come come from the parents most times because you've not trained them in the way they should go that's why the bible is telling us that we should train up a child in the way he should go and the moment you've trained up that child in the way he should go you will discover that he will not depart from it he will not depart from that training that you give your child that is why every one of us and we as a child any training, anything that our parent tells us not to do, because I notice that most of us here we are children. Anything that our parents tells us not to do, you should know that you should not do it. If your parents, okay, it is no good for you to lie. Oh, don't take anything that does not belong to you. Don't don't lie. Don't do this. Don't do that. You should know that your parents love you. He said a parent that he said he said a child that a father love is the one that he corrects. If your daddy, if your mommy does not love you, will not correct you. Even if you are going into the fire, they will just be looking at you. But the moment they start to correct you, don't do this. So when you see an elderly person, you greet, you humble yourself, you, you do this, you do that. There's some people, some of you, you see an elderly person going, is you even expect that elderly person to greet you on the way. You, you cannot open your mouth and greet. Or you see somebody carrying something, an elderly person, you see the person, ah, ah let me help you. All, and then the person say, okay, don't worry, leave it alone. I will carry it. Fine. Please, I want to ask a question. You said train up a child in the way you should go, and when he grows, he will not depart. I had this statement that pastor's children are the most corrupt in university. So is it that a whole pastor leading a church, children are going, children of pastors are supposed to be the first to go to resume in Sunday school like this and all those things. So could you, could somebody attempt to, to match that, this phenomenon that we, that we are seeing, or in relation to, in relation to train up a child? in the way it should go and when it grow old it will not depart from it we i had this i had it oh i, I but, but me too I have, I have some pastor children around me that are just doing anyhow so that is what i want to say who we'll have an answer to that most times they said you don't see most most especially most of our elderly people or adults let me say adults most times you don't see the lead in your own eyes, but you will see the one in somebody's eyes. You see them chanting, as in you see them correcting children outside, but their own children, they will not be able to correct them. The simple truth is that most of those pastors' children that go wayward outside, most of them, their parents, even the pastors themselves, they don't trade them from inside. Hmm. Yoruba, we only Latin 
When you did not train that child from that inside, at the end of the day, we disgrace you outside. That's just it. Most of those, uh, most of those pastors, most times, they don't even have time. One, they don't have time for their house. That's just it. You see them going from one crusade to another. You see them going, it's only maybe the wife that will be at home, try to train the children. Most times, you see them, they call them to this one. You call them to this place. They go from one place to another. They don't really have time for their children. They don't really have time to train their child. So how do you expect that the child that you have not trained, and you expect the child to go outside and perform well, except a child that has the fear of God? Although we have a lot of children that even if you train them from now till next year, they will still become wayward. That one is just God that can intervene to that, those, those kind of child. But some of these cases that they are, the pastor's child are not <coughs> are behaving anyhow outside. Most times, one, their parents, especially the father, does not have time to even train. The Bible is saying that train up your child. He's not saying that you should just do it. He said train up your child. Training. But they don't have that Conscious time. They don't have that time for that training. To train that child that, okay, when that child will not grow, he will not depart from that training. So most times, these are pastors, they go from one crusade to another, they go from one place to another, they don't have time for their home. Most times, they come back, they are so tired. Not to even talk of having time, to even say, okay, my child, bring your book. What have you done in school today? Let me see your work. Ah, you scored zero. How come you scored zero today? What happened? And try to correct, okay, oh, this one, you don't understand. Okay, bring it. Even some child, when they come back, they give you their assignment, that please, that let me look at, you say you are so tired. And you expect that child. That's not training. Definitely, you are not training that child. So most times, all these faults most times comes from the parents. Most times the parent does not train the child well. That is why you see them at the end of the day, they are becoming something else outside. And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Wow. So I think she is doing a perfect justice. We, we forget something in that scripture. That scripture said, train up a child. And she is pointing out that it's not just being a pastor child. The pastor child may be there and and it's not being well trained it's not no, no proper or bringing so it will still deviate from certain rules so ladies and gentlemen do we have any question answers contribution that will be the last we will take one more person as the last train up why are children the greatest in the kingdom of god that is just a singular topic that we are considering today why are children the greatest in the kingdom of god that is a singular topic well, do we have anyone? Okay. Eh? In the absence of anyone, that will be the end. Let's pray and thank God. Let's begin to thank God. You want to talk? Let's thank God. Father, we thank you. We bless your name for everything. Thank you for this great work. Give us power to train our children. Give us power for we to become, for we to have a resounding future. Wherever, whoever is watching us and whoever is sitting here that have any problem, your problem is solved in the name of Jesus. Amen. Go in peace. Everything shall be well with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Bye for now. Thank you.